Hey, I'm Mr. Williamson, and this is the first of the videos to go over some terms that you need to know in the evolution unit. Uh, before we get started, you probably want to make sure you're taking good notes. So you can uh, attach them to the assignment in, in uh, Google Classroom or just take good notes no matter what. Again, I like uh, Cornell style for students, but you, uh, you do whatever wash your dishes. Let's get started. We're talking about natural selection, um, a working definition. Like, like what could you, we, I mean, we know that natural selection is um, uh, very, uh, all organisms show variation. Um, uh, the overpopulation creates competition, which is, a, or, or better word than competition, is probably a struggle to survive. Um, and if you have a struggle to survive, the, you have a survival of the fittest where certain individuals have an, uh, an advantage because of those variations to survive in the environment than others. And then finally, uh, if you survive, you can reproduce and that can lead to speciation. So what can we, how can we give that a, a better term than for, for natural section? What could we talk about? Well, as it says, pressure applied by the environment. That's why it's a natural selection. Pressure applied by the environment to select for a certain adaptation a certain adaptation. So it could be like a lot of you in, in the last conversations we've had, uh, we, we talked about your camouflage and how they can blend in or the, how they can be adapted for an environment where there's more or less water than, than in their normal, than there used to be, or uh, the scarcity of food or something. But the, the environment selects for a certain adaptation. Again, definition, pressure applied by environment to select for a certain adaptation. So what is evolution, all right? Evolution is a change in the frequency of a gene in the gene pool from one generation to the next generation. All right, that's all it is. I'm not saying anything about, you know, your mother was an ape. No, what is evolution? It's a change in the frequency of a gene in the gene pool from one generation to the next generation. That's it. Just a change in the gene frequency in the gene pool from one generation to the next. But there's some terms there we probably need to define. For instance, what is the frequency of a gene or what is a gene pool? We, let's talk about that. So let's talk about gene frequency. We look at the gene frequency here and say in the first generation, we're looking at, at mice or rats and, and we can see down at the bottom that um, light co colored fur is good camouflage and it's the dominant, it's the dominant trait and, and light colored fur, uh, dark colored fur is the recessive trait. All right, so, and we can see over in the first generation that we have all hetero, uh, homozygous, big A, big A, and we have all homozygous, little a, little a. So it's a 50-50, that there are 50% of the genes are in, um, uh, of, of each gene in the generation. And then along comes the fox and hunts, and he's hunting by sight, or she's hunting by sight. Um, and, and obviously the dark colors show up better, so they're hunted out more, all right? But they also get to mate. So what we can see here is, a uh, a wide large number of of homozygous a's we see some heterozygous big a little a's and then finally we have the the little ones little a little a homozygous those are the ones that are going to show up dark again all right there the number has gone down we can see where the, the number of little a's the recessive gene has gone down even if it was the dominant gene it would still go down because they're the ones that are hunted more all right so we go through another process another generation of the hunting by the fox and we come up with a lot of the homozygous dominant genes all right you can see actually the number nine to one nine to one because we kind of count those two in there. But there's these, even these, the dark ones have been eliminated because we have eliminated um, so many of the recessive genes. And the only way the recessive gene shows up in the phenotype is if you get a homozygous recessive. And because that gene is, doesn't show up very often, it doesn't occur. It's kind of like when we talked about Tay-Sachs. The gene is out there, but the only way that ever shows up in, in the phenotype and it affects the person is if they get the both recessive genes. And that doesn't happen very often. But this is gene frequency. How often does the gene show up in a population? And you can see where the gene frequency has declined on the, in this case. So what's a gene pool? Because we talked about evolution being a, a change in the gene frequency in a gene pool from one generation to the next. 
Um, the gene pool is the total number of genes available to the population of organisms. All right. If you think about it, if the gene doesn't exist, the organism can't get that trait. All right. So, for instance, this is a gene pool, and you have Gene Autry. He was like in the uh, 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 probably the, the early late 50s, 60s. He was a cowboy uh, movie star, and Gene Simmons, who's the lead singer for Kiss. Uh, Gene Turney, I don't even know who that is. Gene Hackman, he's a movie star. He was in several movies. Gene Shalit was a, uh, a movie critic for the Chicago, one of the Chicago newspapers. Gene Kelly did uh, Singing in the Rain and a couple other movies, big dance uh, um, song guy. And Gene Wilder, he was, this This, guy, this is uh, Charlie and the Chocolate. He, this is Willy Wonka in the original movie. That's, you know, Gene Wilder. It's the gene pool. Not saying anything else. Okay, that's a little bit of the gene pool. The gene pool is the total number of genes available to a population. All right, so over here you have a population of red birds, and over here you have a population of blue birds. All right, and if you look, there's no genes, no red genes in the blue population, and no blue genes in the red population. So if the red population wanted to have, not wanted to, but needed to have, uh, a, a blue bird to survive, or if the blue population need red uh, coloration to survive, they don't have that gene. That's not going to take place. All right, it doesn't exist. It's kind of like if someone says, "You can do that when pigs fly." Pigs will never fly. Pigs don't have a gene for wings. I don't care how long you wait around; they will. That will not happen. The only way we can get that in gene into the gene pool is if we somehow bring that gene in. If we bring in the red gene over to the, the, the blue, or if we bring in, bring in a blue over the red. That's the only way we're going to get that gene into the gene pool. A gene pool is the total number of genes available to a population. And that brings us to the next question. What in the world is a population? All right, well, let me answer that. A population is a, a group of organisms that naturally interbreed, all right? It could be a species or it could just be by location, but a group of organisms that naturally interbreed is a population. Let's take a look at that, all right? Here's a population of rats. King has rats, by the way. Um, if we ever move any of those, those you know, shipping containers that we have stored, storing things in, you would be surprised what crawls out from underneath there. Oh my God, you don't want to know. But my point is, King has rats, and Polly has rats. Obviously, our rats are smarter than theirs because, well, we're King. It's great to be King, and they're Polly. No, just it's not. Okay, they have rats. We have rats. Are they the same population? No. Why? Because this is Polly way up here. And this is King way down here. All right. Well, our rats are smart. They're not smart enough to hop a bus and ride down to Polly. Polly's rats, they don't even know what a bus are. Is, is, are, whatever. Anyways, my point is, rats are not mating. The population of rats at Polly and the population of rats at King are two different populations. They might be the same species. They might be able to interbreed. But they can't because of location. So you have two reasons that you can have a population. One, they're genetically incapable, all right? Like cats and dogs. That's two different species, not the same population. Even though they live in the same house, maybe not the same population. Or the population could be spread out by geography. They're too spread out to, 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 to uh, interbreed, to breed. They just don't have, they, the, the, a population is a group of organisms that naturally interbreed. And when you're separated by four or five miles, you're not interbreeding. So what can we do to change the gene pool? Well, we can talk about gene flow, genetic drift, and uh, natural mutation. And we're going to talk about each one of those. So you can either take the write it all down now or write it down as I go through it. Because I'm about to go through it right now. Let's talk about gene flow. Gene flows are alleles or genes entering and exiting a gene pool. All right, it could change the ability of, it to, uh, of the organisms to adapt or not. doesn't have to, but gene flow is just something entering or exiting the gene pool. Um, you can enter the exit, by, enter, exit the gene pool by death. 
if an organism that has a certain gene that, that, that you know, it might be needed later on dies, that gene no longer exists. So again, we go back to this picture. This is gene flow, all right? If we brought in um, the red bird somehow crossed over the mountain, this is a, a ge geographic type thing. There's a large mountain range in the middle between these two species, two populations of birds, not species of birds, because it was species of birds they couldn't interbreed. But these are populations, same species, different variations. Um, but if there's a mountain range that between them and they can't get over it, then they're going to have two different populations. But if we could get a red bird into the blue population, or if we could get a, a blue bird into the red population, we would have gene flow. We would be introducing a blue gene into the red uh, bird population. We'd be entering, in, introducing a red gene into the blue population. And it doesn't have to go one for one. You could have it go uh, one way. You could have it just so the red inner goes into the blue, but the blue never goes into the red because it just didn't work out that way. Gene flow is just the entrance or exit of a gene from the gene pool. Genetic drift is a change in the gene frequency resulting in purely random fluctuations, usually associated with some kind of large disaster. Okay. For instance, we have a, uh, on, the, on the left over here, we have a, a group of, of butterflies. And you can see over here that there are some yellow ones in here. Okay, so we have some yellow ones. We also have some orange ones here. So we have some, some orange, this one here, orange. And then we also have uh, some lighter colored ones. All right, so along comes a fire and basically wipes out, uh, if I can figure this out correctly, wipes them all out kind of along these lines right here. Okay, so all these guys die. It has nothing to do with natural selection. It has nothing to do with one trait is better than the other. It doesn't have to do anything to do with the color of the butterfly. Fire wiped out half the population. And in the process, it wiped out all the yellow ones. There are no yellow butterflies over here. That's genetic drift. The gene frequency changed because of random fluctuations. Or in this case, a disaster wiped out some of the genes took out of that major population, all right? And that brings us to neutral mutation, a mutation that does not affect the fitness of an organism, but may help, their, help, help or hurt the species later. If we're talking about pigs flying. If there was a mutation in a pig that could grow wings, well, right now they don't need them, so why grow them? They're not gonna, there's no selection to grow wings, so there's no need for the pigs to grow the wings. But maybe later on, Pigs go, hey, I need to fly. There's some kind of new animal that's or predator that's, that's attacking us, and the ones that could fly a little bit have a better advantage. Bam, pigs fly. Okay? Here's an example of, of a neutral mutation. Um, we talked to the, probably talked about this Wednesday if everything goes like I want it to, but free ear lobes, you can see where they're actually unattached. They're not attached to the, the, the side of the head. And then there's attached ear lobes where the ear, ear lobe goes right into the the ear and I have attached ear lobes right here. Okay, so um, those are that's a neutral mutation. It's it, it is a mutation a long, long, long time ago, but um, doesn't doesn't hurt it. It's like it's not like it. If you have attached ear lobes, then you die more often than if you have free ear lobes or vice versa. It doesn't have any effect. It's a neutral mutation. All right, and an adaptation. Finally, last thing. Adaptation, an inherited uh, trait or set of traits that helps the chances of survival and reproduction of an organism. And that's what we're going to ta start talking about in the next video. We're going to talk about different types of adaptations. So hopefully you took good notes. I'm not going to review the whole thing because they're just a bunch of terms. Yeah, I can review the whole thing. We've got like, you know, what is the working definition of, of evolution? It's a change in the gene frequency from one generation to the next. Um, natural selection is the environment selecting for a particular trait. Um, we talked about gene pool um, uh, or gene frequency. How often does a gene show up in a population? We talked about um, gene pool. All of the genes available to a population, that's the gene pool. The, the gene pool can be different, all right, depending on the population. A population is a group of organisms that naturally interbreed. That can be based on species or it can be based on geography, being too far or separated from another group. Uh, we talked about gene flow. Um, you've got uh, gene flow where th or the, the genes enter or exit the gene pool. You have uh, genetic drift where usually a disaster or some kind of thing affects 
uh, randomly affects the genes and eliminates or, or basically eliminates them, or we have neut neutral mutations, mutations that don't affect or help the organism at the time. So hopefully you took good notes. Um, if you have any questions, make sure you ask them in Edpuzzle or in class. Good luck.